which translates in English as uh, everybody's wine. I was going to say, can you say that again and I can say everybody's wine? Which translates as everybody's wine. Uh, we want to thank like a wine juice. <laughs> wine juice? A, wine uh, a, a grape juice. Like, wait, really? uh, no joke. We're going to put like a filming, not filming, filming, not filming sign for you. He never knows. I never know. It's filming? I think so. Go check. No, no. It's, it's, it's really Your curls look great today. Thank you. True star of the set, the diva of the set. So we're going to be using... Welcome to our casa. It's a super rainy day here in New York and we're stuck inside. Well, I guess we'd be stuck inside anyway. We decided that we need some comfort in our lives. So today we are going to be making red wine braised short rib accompanied by some Parmigiano polenta. Mmm, comfort. Do you need a hat? We're fine. Just some butter and Parmesan. <laughs> Maybe some vino. Okay, I'll take a hug. Okay, we have a lot to do. We have about 2.2 pounds of short rib because it's just the two of us, so we don't need to make that much. Um, and we have it just cut in three different pieces. Of course, if this is a meal for six, you can cut them even smaller. Have your butcher cut them um, into little chunks. It's really up to you. You wanna make sure to take out your short rib out of the fridge and sit at room temperature for about 20 minutes. And when you take it out of the fridge, you want to salt them, season them on both sides. Get them nice and salty. Let's take a look at the ingredients for our wine braised short rib. We're going to be using three cups of Sangiovese, but whatever red wine that you like to cook with, a Cabernet, a Shiraz, anything will do. We're going to be using a sofrito, one whole onion chopped, two carrots chopped, and two celery stalks chopped. Six cloves of garlic, two bay leaves, two sprigs of rosemary, and a handful of thyme. We have three tablespoons of all-purpose flour, two tablespoons of tomato paste, four cups of beef stock, and we'll be using olive oil as well. So you're going to want to use a pot that has a lid because we're going to be cooking it in the oven later on. So I'm going to be using my cast iron Dutch oven. Perfect. We want our flame nice and high and we're going to coat the bottom of our Dutch oven. So our first step is we're going to brown our short rib. Straight in, doesn't matter what side you start with. And we're only going to do two first because all three is going to overcrowd the pan and we don't want that. So our short rib got brown. It took about two minutes for each side. So we're going to set that aside on a plate and we're going to cook up the sofrito. So I just took the, the pot of the oil and all of these little pieces and the fat from the short rib. I just took it off the flame for a few minutes just to let it cool down so it's not super, super, super high temperature. So it's had about five minutes to cool down. I'm gonna bring that flame back up to a medium and it's time to add my onions. After about two minutes of cooking the onion, we're gonna add our carrot and our celery. Okay, we're just gonna add two pinches of salt. After about five minutes, we're gonna add our two tablespoons of tomato paste. We just want our tomato paste to be fully incorporated and give it a few minutes to get a nice caramelization. Now we add our three tablespoons of all-purpose flour. A lot of liquids in this recipe, so this is gonna really 
thicken it up nicely. Time for the vino. We're gonna add three cups. Once we have the wine in, we want to raise our flame back up to a super high heat. We're gonna stir it around so there's no more clumps of that sofrito and it's all becoming one nice liquid, nice sauce. And after you've done that, we're gonna add back in our short rib. Nestle it in there. And any of those juices on that plate, yeah, that's going in. Once it reaches a boil, we're just gonna lower that flame to medium high. And we're gonna let it simmer until your wine has reduced. After about 30 minutes, your wine should be reduced. You're looking for a super, super nice, thick sauce. Now we're gonna add our six cloves of garlic. You can just add them in like that. Two bay leaves. And we're going to nestle in our fresh thyme and fresh rosemary. And to finish it off, our four cups of beef stock. Now we want to bring that flame back up. We want to get our beef stock to a boil. And then we're ready to put it in the oven. Gonna add some fresh cracked black pepper and a few pinches of salt. Once it's reached a boil, let's turn it off and cover. It's covered, it's ready to be cooked at 350 for about two hours. Whew. Now I think it's time for some vino. For a preparation like braised meat, today we need an intense, heavy, full red wine, and we chose Barbera. Barbera is the third most planted vine in Italy after Sangiovese and Montepulciano. It's a long aging, robust type of vine that brings grapes that are uh, fruit forward, enhanced in tannins, and um, which main characteristic we can say it's acidity. Whenever we're gonna be able to go back to our New York restaurants and you need a dry, uh, full um, body wines, ask for a Barbera, they usually uh, uh, fairly priced and it's a great, great option. Also comes from one of our favorite places in Italy. It comes from Piedmont. Uh, it's a Piemontese wine. We have three uh, basically type of Barbera. The first one is Monferrato where we can trace its origin. Then around the city of Asti we have the Barbera d'Asti and in the Lange we have the Barbera di Alba. What are we drinking today? <laughs> <laughs> the wine we're drinking today is Barbera Vino di Tutti, which translates in English as Everybody's Wine. Everybody's Wine. We want to thank uh, Indy wineries, Chris and Rosanna, for having discovered this gem and imported it in uh, the United States. It's uh, a wine that we particularly love because its uh, producer is a co-op. It's a gang of five uh, wine producers uh, whose vineyards are a few miles apart. Their main focus and philosophy is the respect for the ecosystem. They are committed to a biodynamic, sustainable and organic farming. Their cooperation is based on friendship. They all left daytime jobs and they became farmers. The five of them, they are amazing. Yeah. They only use to make this wine indigenous yeast. They do not filter nor clarify the wine. They don't acidify or deacidify the product. We can call this wine a natural wine. Let's give it a try. Cheers. Cheers. Vino di tutti! Wow! Wow! Ooh, I love it! Time to make the polenta. For the ingredients we're going to be using, of course, polenta. We're going to be using one cup of polenta. We will be using four cups of water, half a cup of parmigiano reggiano. Because we are the worst, we're going to be using four tablespoons of butter. We're the worst. We're monsters. So we start by adding four cups of water and we're gonna turn our flame on. We're gonna, we want the water to get up to a boil before we start adding the polenta. Okay, once your water is boiling, we're gonna slowly start incorporating the polenta in. A little bit at a time. 
and whisking. A lot of whisking when it comes to polenta. We don't want it to clump up. You just need to continuously keep whisking. Turn the flame down to a lower temperature. And keep continuing whisking. Once it's thickened up, we're ready to add our four tablespoons of butter. <laughs> I cut them in little tablespoon cubes just so they melt evenly. I'm gonna add our half cup of Parmigiano Reggiano. Beautiful. We're gonna add some salt, and this is totally quanto basta, so add and taste, add and taste. And taste. I'm gonna chop up a little parsley and some chives just to put on top. It's gonna be a really nice, fresh ingredient. So it's been two hours, and this little baby's ready to come out of the oven. Beautiful.